cataractcoach.com, Alcon Panoptics Tips and Tricks. Learn it from Dr. Corey Ramstead from British Columbia, Canada. Now, this lens has been available in Canada for a few years. In the United States, it's only been available for a few months. And this is as of November 2019. So certainly we have an opportunity to learn from other surgeons like Dr. Ramstead, who has a lot more experience with this lens. So if his first tip is to load the lens yourself. Now he has the lens injector cartridge filled with cohesive viscoelastic. That's his preference. And the reason is it adheres less to the lens. Very important that we have this lens in the exact position that we want in the eye. So let's look at this video. This is Dr. Ramsett operating. He's going to deliver the lens into the eye and then unfold it, making sure the entire lens goes in the capsule bag. Notice he has a beautiful capsorexis, a clean capsule bag. This is the toric version of the panoptics, and he has toric marks already placed. So he's going to put his infusion, irrigation aspiration probe in the eye and go under the eye well and make sure he removes all the viscoelastic. That's important. This optic is made of a sticky or tacky material that will stay in position and adhere to the posterior lens capsule. But if there is residual viscoelastic, that'll act as a lubricant, and that can cause the lens to slip. So if you do use a dispersive agent on the eye well, you better go behind the optic and really scrub all of it off the posterior aspect of the optic. If you're using a cohesive viscoelastic, you still need to get behind the optic. But like Dr. Ramstead is doing here, you can uh, just do it quickly. Now he's got just the coaxial lights on, and he's paying attention to that first Purkinje image. He's having the patient fixate right on those two lights. Remember, these lights are coaxial with the surgeon's oculars. Dr. Ramstead said he doesn't pay too much attention to the fourth Purkinje image, which is the inverted one. He's more concerned with that first Purkinje image. And you have to have those Purkinje images lined up in the center of the optic. The true visual axis may be just slightly nasal to the pupil center. And then because it's a toric lens, that toric alignment has to be done as well. Very important that the incisions are sealed completely at the end of the case. If there's leakage of any of the incisions, that can cause a temporary shallowing of the anterior chamber and cause the lens to slip. Let me show you a case that I'm doing with the same lens, using those same pearls we learned from Dr. Romstead. So again, there's the lens going in the capsule bag, using the chopper now to rotate it to ensure that both haptics open up. The purple dots at the limbus are the cardinal meridians, but that's not where I want the lens aligned. In fact, there are some very fine marks on the cornea, which I'll show you at the end. Here's going behind the optic, really need to get underneath this optic and get all the viscoelastic out. I like to really get all the viscoelastic, make sure none of it's adherent to the back of the IOL optic. Now I'll go in, in the front, remove all the viscoelastic as well. You can clearly see the toric lens marks and you can see the rings on that pen optics. So we'll do this, clean it all our viscoelastic, and we want to put the lens in its final position and have it stay there. So now using the infusion from the IA probe to keep the eye inflated, we're going to put the chopper in the eye to center up the lens, but also to get the lens rotated. In this case, we don't have the largest pupil, which is okay. We can move underneath it. And now also, I'm sure that the entire lens, haptics, optic, everything is in the capsule bag. So we'll get this rotated to the alignment marks that are desired. In this case, these alignment marks are about the 100 degree meridian. And then I'm showing you those Purkinje images. Here you see three dots on the Purkinje images. There they are lined up in the center of that central ring of the optic. So this lens is a good choice for patients, depending on the anatomy and the patient desires. There's certainly going to be more of, uh, types of lenses available in the very near future. For you as a surgeon, I encourage you, have the most complete toolbox. Have all kinds of lenses available and then you can tailor it to the patient in the anatomy. Here I'm sealing up the main incision. I don't want it overly hydrated, but it's very important to me that it's sufficiently sealed so that it's absolutely watertight. Again, I don't want even the slightest leakage from any incision. 
So take our time there and make sure it's done correctly. We'll then go inside, do a little sweep here, make sure there's no retained viscoelastic in the angle. That looks great, seal the incision, and I like the positioning of the lens. So we're gonna zoom in here at the end and I'm gonna show you exactly what we're looking for in that alignment. There are the Purkinje images. I like both of the Purkinje images lined up in the center. The first Purkinje image is, is of course the more important one. The slightly yellow Purkinje image that's inverted, that's the fourth Purkinje image from the posterior surface of the IOL. And of course, you know, the first Purkinje images is from the anterior surface of the cornea. We put some tetracaine on a wet cell and we're holding it over the incision that causes focal osmosis and we'll double check to make sure it's absolutely sealed. Now zooming in here, I'll show you those are the rings and you can also see the marks on the cornea. There are three little dots on the cornea and those are lined up very nicely once we account for parallax with the toric marks on the IOL. So there's the centration of the optic, which I like very much. And then I'll show you, here we go, for the toric marks, look right to the right of your screen there, you'll see their double sets, their torque marks on the optic, and then torque alignment marks on the cornea. So this looks great. And then post-op, the patient had a beautiful outcome of Plano.